one and a half billion cars on the roads today all around the world. All told, that's responsible for at least half of global carbon emissions. And while green militants cry, ban the car, engineers say, build a better one. And hydrogen may be the answer. We're talking about an independent system that the only requirement is logistics of the uh, compressed, uh, compressed tanks of, uh, of hydrogen. Uh, this has now become, from uh, a niche, hydrogen became to the main road. So you'll see that the technology on hydrogen will be not only on EV cars, it will be even for heating. Mm -hmm. It will, I think hydrogen, as we believe, is going to be the future fuel. Traditional electric vehicles have been pushed as the solution to carbon emissions, but the batteries are hard to produce and certainly not green to do so. And the electricity used to charge them often comes from coal, making many EVs just steam engines with extra steps. But hydrogen fuel cells don't have the same limits. We start to get electric current, which is a result of making water. Hydrogen one side, oxygen from the other side become water inside. While getting from two separate elements into water, we shunt the electrode, and this electron becomes electricity. So long as you have a supply of hydrogen, which can be produced from water and any electrical source, so solar, wind, or nuclear, you can generate power, and the only emission is water. On top of that, it's energy efficient. An internal combustion engine is about 25% efficiency, and a fuel cell has 52% efficiency. That's the only change. Yeah, because you lose a lot on uh, overheating, you lose a lot on the uh, extra vibrations and, and mechanical things. So if the technology is so perfect, why haven't hydrogen cars and hydrogen power taken over the world just yet? The main issue is a combination of logistics, costs, and perception. But this Israeli company believes it has the answer. Be realistic. Oil and gas will, will be with us easily until 2050, 2060. There's no doubt, okay? We have a period of three, four decades in order to build a new infrastructure. But this, this infrastructure need to be very, very smart because right now, this is what was centralized infrastructure. You have big oil infrastructure, and then you have millions of miles of uh, pipeline. That's point one. Drive down the street. How many gas stations do you pass? Compare that to how many hydrogen stations. Building a nation's worth of pipes is a lot easier said than done. So what if you didn't need to? We can take this um, shelter with a fuel cell inside, with the batteries inside, with the converters and the inverters, you take it to the middle of nowhere and you can charge at a high speed DC charging. That's one of GenCell's answers. Standalone hydrogen powered charge stations compatible with any EV on the road. Another issue though is cost. Hydrogen fuel cells are tens of thousands of dollars and hydrogen isn't produced at scale. At this stage it's more expensive than traditional oil and gas. And I think one, this is one of the hurdles of uh, adopting this technology. But in the long term, it will be more competitive than oil and gas. In 10 years, so one kilogram of hydrogen, the price of one dollar. So at the moment that we're going to be there, then you will see that hydrogen will be in every street corner. But GenCell's other big innovation, slashing the cost of the fuel cells themselves. The tech was originally designed for the space shuttle and uses a lot of platinum, $14,000 a pound. GenCell has found a way to get the same results with nickel, just $9 a pound. But hydrogen cars do exist even now, the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo. Neither has been a huge market success, and that's because hydrogen has a bit of a bad rap. You say hydrogen and people think of the Hindenburg, and nobody wants that under the passenger seat. The bottom line that hydrogen is much more safer than the cooking gas that you and me are using it in our home. And if you looked on the history, the safety history of the usage of hydrogen, you rarely find any events. While if you looked on oil and gas history, you will find many, many events with a lot of casualties. OECD data backs that up. But until hydrogen is a regular part of people's lives, public perception is unlikely to change. But standalone infrastructure like hydrogen-powered charging stations have already been rolled out at power stations worldwide. So give it a few years, and it might just roll in to your garage, too.